Tyler Adams or Johnny Cardoso? Gio Reyna or Malik Tillman? There are a lot of hot debates in the U.S. men's national team midfield at the moment. And today, we're going to be talking about most of them while we build a U.S. men's national team midfield depth chart. Hi, it's your new here. Filippo, and welcome to Tactical Manager TV, and welcome to episode two of a three-episode mini-series. Part one, we did the depth chart of the defenders, where we talked about the goalkeepers, center backs, and fullbacks. Today, we're going to do the midfield, which we're essentially going to go three players deep into the central defensive midfield position, which the hot topic here is who's better, Johnny or Tyler Adams? You can let me know in the comment section of this video. Then we're going to go three positions into the central midfield position, which is the eight, where primarily Weston McKinney plays, and then the central attacking midfielder. We're going to also go three positions in, which will probably be the debate between Gio Reyna and Malik Tillman. And just like part one, we have Adam from U USMNT Stan on X. He's the guest. We're going to be debating. We don't agree on everything. It's going to be a pretty hot debate on Johnny and Tyler. And with that said, drop a like before we start because it's free and it helps the channel. And I'm recording this with a terrible flu. Like I, I'm going to probably say this in the recording. This is like the Michael Jordan flu game. But before we start, a quick word from the sponsor of this video, BetterHelp. And thank you, BetterHelp for sponsoring the channel. Regardless if you have a clinical mental health issue like depression or anxiety, or if you're just a US men's national team fan struggling with the return of Greg Berhalter, no, in all seriousness, therapy can give you the tools to approach your life in a very different way. So for that reason, we are partnering up once again with BetterHelp. BetterHelp's mission is to make therapy more affordable and more accessible. And this is an important mission because finding a therapist can be extremely hard, especially when you're limited to the options in your area. But when it's online, you can get a therapist from anywhere in the country, sometimes even anywhere in the world. BetterHelp is a platform that makes finding a therapist easier because it is online. It's remote. And by filling out a few questions, BetterHelp can match you to a professional therapist as little as in a few days. And if the therapist that they match you with is not the right fit for you, they will replace him or her for another therapist with no additional cost. You may sign up and register now with the link that I placed on the description of this video, which is betterhelp.com slash tactical manager TV. That is betterhelp.com slash tactical manager TV. Yes, we used tactical manager TV. That link will also give you 10% off on your first month. And in the process, you'll be helping the channel avoid bankruptcy. So once again, thank you, BetterHelp. All right, everyone, welcome to part two of the Tactical Manager USMNT depth chart flu game. I'm still dealing with the flu because we're recording the same day. Um, but I'm standing strong, Adam. You, you've been seeing. I've been, I'm still standing on my feet. Am I, what am I right now, 20 like, points in the third yeah, quarter? I would say like you're, we got through the first quarter, you know, and you're, you got six points, you know, two mm -hmm. assists. You're distributing okay. It was a slow start. You didn't want to come out like gangbusters with the flu, though. You know, like we got a fourth quarter to play tag. Like you got to – that's the striker combo, right, tomorrow? Like – you got to save something here, bud. Like you. They do call me the USMNT Michael Jordan for a reason. It's true. Actually, no one calls me that. But anyhow, <laughs> let's let's go to the midfielders. And the way we're going to do the midfielders, Adam, it's going to be like this. We're not going to go on that 4-3-3. Three, three, that's like a 6 and 2 eights. We're just going to go like this. The top three sixes, so the central defensive midfielders. The top three central midfielders, the eights. And then the top three tens, the central attacking midfielders or the playmakers, whatever you want to call it. So let's start with the defensive one. We always start from the back and we go up into the field. And I'm going to pass you this hot potato because the sixth oh position, it's like this. The top two, it's debatable. After that, no one really cares too much at the moment uh, unless you repeat a name or something. You can repeat names on the six and the eight. But I'm pretty sure the debate for you is going to be the same. Fully healthy, assuming fully fit, is it John? Let's say Tyler Adams is playing like he was playing for Leeds. Is it Johnny right now that you're seeing for Real Betis, or is it Tyler Adams, assuming he is back to his old self, which we all hope he freaking sure. does? The caveat, Tyler Adams is back tomorrow, and he's the same guy that we saw, right? I'm not mm -hmm. going to say he's elevated his game a ton. He hasn't dropped. He's the same guy we saw 
when, when he was last playing consistently. That's who I'm talking about right now. That guy is still number one for me right now. And that is not going to be popular amongst a lot of people, and I'm okay with that. And listen, I might still be slow on Johnny, and that's okay. I have loved what I've seen out of Johnny at every stop from him over the last eight months, honestly. He's been really good. We've seen growth in his game, showing it at a really high level now. I just, for me to put him fully over Tyler, I want to see it for more than a month and a half, right? Like, that's just my personal feel and take. And listen, if I was on the USMNT staff, I prob- I should have watched enough games that I would have a stronger take than what I have on him right now. But I need to see more. So it's, Tyler's my one, Johnny's my two. Uh, but man, is it a debate right now? And man, are there certain games, right? Certain matchups and tactics that we would need to play a guy like Johnny more than a guy like Tyler Adams. Um, but you know, we're in the Copa tomorrow and we're playing Argentina. Tyler Adams is in the game for me. Yeah. I've watched a lot of Tyler Adams, New York Red Bulls, Leipzig, Leeds, unfortunately no Bournemouth really so far. Um, U S men's national team. And I've watched Johnny for a long time too, a long time. Uh, the Brazilian league is first and foremost, it's not a joke league. Um, it's probably number six, number seven in the world. Um, probably more towards number seven in the world. And you you all kind of saw it because Johnny came from Brazil, arrived in La Liga, and just kind of seemed like he was playing at the same level. Um, it even seems like he's playing a bit better because he has maybe better players around him, uh, even a bit better. Even though he did stand out for Internacional quite a bit, they made a deep run in the Copa Libertadores, which is an extremely tough tournament to play with the environment teams you face. The The thing is for me... When I watch Johnny and Tyler, I think Johnny is better than Tyler in everything at the six besides one thing, isolation. One-on-one isolation, Tyler's more agile, much more aggressive. Um, I I do think there's also the aspect to take into consideration. uh, Johnny's not the leader Tyler Adams will be because of language and time with the group. And Tyler (laughs) has that leadership like nature in him, right? That's, That's how he is. So when you look into those two, I give a point to Tyler for leadership, which is important, by the way. This is not its not like a bullshit take. Like, it is important. You need leaders on the field. That, that is something that matters. And when it comes to, like, isolation defense, um, Tyler is also better than Johnny from what I've seen. More aggressive, faster. Tyler is also more versatile. If you need to throw him at a right back, left back, he can play there. I've never seen Johnny do that. I've seen Johnny play a little bit out wide in the midfield, but almost like a defensive midfielder. Like it, it, that's his position. He's like a six. Johnny can maybe play the eight. I don't like him too much at the eight. Uh, can play as a double pivot also, but staying a bit more. Tyler has that versatility. But when it comes to passing, long shots, you saw the shot that he scored over the weekend. Yeah, they're going to talk about Tyler scoring the Champions League. That, that was a shot that deflected. That, that, the shot that Johnny took, not many of our players can take shots like that from long range. Uh, Johnny has one big advantage over Tyler. He's very tall. Johnny's actually tall. Uh, there's even that picture I posted on X a while back with me and Johnny a few years back at Christmas. He's way taller than me. I'm 5'9", so I'm not tall. But I think Tyler's around my height or maybe a bit taller, like 5'10". Johnny's like reasonably taller than me. Uh, and he scored goals with his head in Brazil, and he defends set pieces. That's another thing to take into consideration. Where Tyler defending set pieces, not bad. It's just height. There's only so much you can do, right? Players taller. Only so much you can do. I personally would go with Johnny. Uh, I think we need to adjust him also with the team. He needs to play with these players more, get adjusted to the players and how the team is going to play. I would put Johnny first, Tyler as the backup. And then, again, you might get some hate for it. I might get hate too. I've been called biased on Johnny for like 12 months. And then he shows up in La Liga, does what he does, and... People stop calling me biased after that because they're like, okay, the dude is actually like doing in a tough league, playing for a top six team in the league and playing well. But I'm probably still going to get called biased for that for Johnny. But I have him number one. I have Tyler number two. Number three, man, who do you put there? Yeah, I I, I still go double pivot. And so whatever you want to call, whichever one you want to call, I would call Musa probably more of the defensive guy than, than McKinney if you're pairing those two up. Um, but but Musa would be it, I, you know, like, and once again, we have to talk tactics now, but I'm like flipping tactics. If I didn't have Johnny or Tyler, I'm not going to Acosta. I'm not going to anyone else. 
Oh God! No. I was gonna. So, I mean, if you if you set a Costa, if you set a Costa, I would just do this. I would just remove you. I don't need you here. I don't need this here, man. You're out. Oh, that would be but so you didn't, good. so you're welcome to stay. It would be so if you just put me on like a two two minute penalty box where it's like blue all right. card, blue card. Yeah, sorry, man. Blue card. I'm just gonna I'm gonna run it here. You can pick back up with the attacking midfielders. You lose your ability to talk about the midfield. Yeah. So I'm a dictator, by the way. I'm going to I'm going to a double pivot. And I'm putting Musa as the more defensive guy. So Musa would be my third. Let me, I'm gonna put one more notch in, in Tyler's belt and one more notch in Johnny's than, than you just did. And these might be obvious things, but time with the squad matters on all mm-hmm. these national teams. It just does, right? So if we're really talking about playing, if we played Argentina tomorrow, right? And Johnny doesn't get the reps that he will get, hopefully, between now and then with the team. Adams would be the choice because time with the squad matters too, right? You talked about leadership being a real thing. So is chemistry. So is the ability to play in whatever Burhalter's, you know, system is, right? Like Adams has proven that he can play in it and he can help our defense be stout in it, right? Which is the one you always talk about that on your on your videos, right? Tack like is the the one thing we give Burhalter credit for is like we don't leak goals, right? And Adams is definitely a big reason. We're very pragmatic with him, which which leads to that, which, again, I don't there's like negative, it, but, but there's it's There's negatives to it, too, right? There's yeah. negatives to it, too, which, like, when you talk about playing Johnny, it's like the opposite, right? It's going to open up doors that have never been open with Tyler, and I get that, and I'm really excited about that. But personally, I just want to see, you know, I, I want to see five, six, seven reps of Johnny playing with this group and like, but we're at, we're at a til- we're at a turning point for me where we could go from Adams being my choice right now to Johnny in like three weeks, right after this next window, it could be like, wow. Like I have a question just, for you. Actually, he put his stamp on it, and it's his it's his freaking spot, you know, like which would be pretty cool. I have a question for you. Is anyway. is the current Real Betis? I know you haven't watched them too much. Well, you watched a little bit. Is the one, Real... I've only watched one full game. I've seen his highlights one? in the other game. Okay, so maybe so, this so question will be a bit disingenuous from my part, but I'm, I'll just throw it to you and the viewers can respond to it. And you can just say, I don't know if anything. That, that's sure. fine. Is the current Real Betis team worse than the Leeds team that got relegated? No. Are they worse than them? Yeah. No, they're better than them. They're better. I agree. That's that was The point I was going to make there is then I would ask you, if Tyler was there, do they go with Johnny or Tyler? Oh, they go with Johnny for sure. Because both don't really know the team, right? So you just go. So that's my overall point. I think Johnny is the better player. I agree with you that if we have to play tomorrow and Johnny and, and Tyler are, are healthy and Tyler is playing at that level, as be, same level as before, it's just more of like, man, um, I need to play it safe. We're facing Argentina or Brazil. I know Tyler can hold his own here. We might want to like ease things in with Johnny. Um before we throw him there we don't know maybe he just sucks in this yeah. system or or maybe he just feels lost or communication's not working i wouldn't really be worried about that i think he'll be fine because he's been to a lot of camps so he understands how burhalter wants to play he knows that it's a matter of like who fits better of the playing style i, I do think the gap between johnny and tyler defensively is drastically smaller than yeah. what i thought it was gonna be right even thinking back to before the last year i was like man i don't know if johnny's ever gonna be able to hold tyler's jock strap right? Like he can't, he's, he's good. He's stout defensively. Like he's strong, he's big. And now it's his ability to also do things like pick out passes and break lines and all that stuff. The tactical Brazilian stuff, right? That he just brings from the goal, aerial threat, aerial, all the stuff you mentioned, right? Plus all of the, you know, the, the traditional stuff that, that midfielders do that Tyler doesn't do. Um, So yeah, it's, it's interesting, but Moose is my third. Who's your third? It's Musa. Um, yeah. Because I was going to say, even if I had to play a lone six, I think before I play someone like Maloney, because Maloney can defend, just to be fair, but the dude is freaking abysmal on the ball. It's like that shit is like a hot potato. He's just trying to get rid of it as fast as he can. It's horrible. I've watched some Heidenheim this season, and it gives me anxiety when he's on the ball, Leonard <laughs> Maloney. But defending, he's he's solid, like as he yeah. has been for Heidenheim. It's just that obviously Heidenheim is not that much in possession. In um in that sense, but I, I would play Moose as the lone six if even if we went like that, no double pivot lone six. I'd probably go John or Tyler. Won't die on any of these hills, to be honest. And then Musa would be my my third option, which is the same as yours. So no point on debating that or making the point. We know Musa can play there. We've seen him play there before. He's yep. good enough to play there on the ball and defensively. Uh, but now central midfield, picking three. 
I kind of think this one's tough. easy. What? Yeah. Tough, right? McKinney's I mean, number like, one. McKinney's number one. Moose is number sure. two. And I'll put the La Torre as number three. Yeah. It's that. And yeah. I, I don't, I'd be interested to, to debate it with somebody who had a debate. I, I don't, I was looking deep, Tack, and I was like, I don't have a debate. I don't have anyone right now at that eight who I'm like, hot take, right? Like, not really. Like, you could you could say, oh, well, I'd play Geo, but no, I wouldn't. Like, those are the three. And um, is is Luca pushing Musa for the two at all for you? No. Yeah, not he, he isn't for me either. But I could see somebody arguing that, right? If I was going to play devil's advocate, that would maybe be the argument. Is that with Mo- you know the season that Musa's had and the season that Lucas had, you know that maybe Lucas the guy there over Musa? I don't agree with that. I I think I think Musa's really really good. I think without is McKinney not going to play in the Nations League? Do you, uh, apparently, we, we're going to get an update at the end of this week. I'm assuming no, if his shoulder came out. But I, I just even think like why risk Dude. it, right, for club or country, like. He's recovered fairly quickly in the past. He could be back on the weekend. You never know with McKinney. Shoulder, shoulders are weird, though, too. Like, some guys, like, literally their shoulders come out every freaking weekend. So, who knows? But if he's not playing, I feel really good about Musa, like, especially in CONCACAF, being that lead dog at the eight. Like, I just love I, I love what he's brought, man. I, oh, Musa held his own in the guy. World Cup, played well in the World Cup. And, and McKinney, uh, by the way, everyone, we're recording this one week prior to being released. By the time you watch this, maybe you already have an update on McKinney. Uh, so we don't know when we're recording this. McKinney just got injured like two days before we record this. Central attacking midfielders, I think the first two picked themselves. And I do want to point out one thing that I've seen some takes on Twitter that I think are a bit crazy right now. We're, we're going to address that. Number three will be the tricky one. But central attacking midfielder, to me, I just want to make one thing clear. Gio Reyna is still our best central attacking midfielder. It's not Malik Tillman. Malik Tillman is playing very well in the Eredivisie. When he faced tougher opponents, he didn't play that well. Um, against Dortmund, he did draw the penalty kick because he took a bad touch. And again, it wasn't a penalty kick, to just be honest. He didn't play well against Dortmund. He hasn't really played well when it comes to tough opponents. But he does right. beat up Minos. Now, is he a fantastic depth piece? Yes. I don't think we've had someone of his quality as like, oh, he's our backup in the past. It's amazing that we have him. But Gio Reyna is the number one option at the 10. He's in a shaky club situation that we've seen with Pulisic not so long ago, Serginho Des not so long ago. Once Gio figures that out with the club, and I, I swear, I hope he figures it out this summer because the Nottingham Forest was dumb. You see McKinney. Right, McKinney, yes. like not playing much for you, Juve, and come in and ball for us. Like you could, we could literally go. You could go with ten more of those, right? Tack, like it's so important to like note that that like Gio Reyna is a dog. Like you guys need a need a stop. Can can you go back and watch last year's games in the Nations League? That like go watch those games. Go watch the difference in our team's play with him, especially in the middle of the park for the first time really ever, right? And it's it's just different, man. And he is different. And I get that a lot of people are disappointed by him and he's not living up to the hype right now. And there's a lot of hate for Gio, right? Coming out of the World Cup, there's a lot of that lingering hate. And a lot of haters are still out there pouncing right now. But I promise you all, Gio Reyna is going to find a home next year. And I'm going to knock on wood that it's the same kind of choice that Pulisic made, right? And that we've seen a lot of other guys make. Maybe even a choice that like Dest made, where he, he's going to go down a level and find a place to threat. It's it's not even going to be close, guys. It's not close. No, I don't think it is. Uh, and and I do close. think that if Gio was playing for PSV, he would be among their best players and probably dropping a lot of stats too there, just like Malik. PSV would uh, die to have Gio Reyna, right? I mean, they couldn't afford him. Like they would die to have a Gio Reyna, like. So, in my opinion, to me, I just wanted to end that debate because I saw some people like, oh, Tillman has to start because of club form. We've seen Tillman play for the National. I, look, it also comes down to league. The Edith Vizier has produced a lot of flops that were exported because there's a big gap in that league. Like, the top teams in the Edith Vizier are very good. Like, you're seeing PSV go toe-to-toe with Dortmund. But if you get the bottom like six or so not even bottom six. yeah go like mid table down i think there's 16 teams there so be eight down these are all teams to get relegated in the bundesliga somewhat easily all eight yeah yeah. (laughs) um so there's a big gap between these teams uh, and 
that that's one thing I want to say. But number three kind of sucks because people are going to – we can go talk about who's our other 10. I wouldn't put Musa at the 10. I don't think he can play there. Um, people might say Diego Luna. I don't think he would be number three in my depth chart. He is an interesting prospect. Um, Pulisic can play the 10, but I, I don't know. I like him out wide. You know what I would probably put at the 10? Wes McKinney. He's not a playmaker. He can't playmake. But we've seen him play that role. I think it was with um, Schalke, <laughs> Schalke in the past. And I've seen McKinney sometimes with Juve where he just pushes really high up the field. And you just kind of let him roam. You just let him roam. So he's almost like a shadow striker in that 10 position. The central attacking midfielder is a shadow striker. So we would lose playmaking ability. He's not the playmaker Gio Reyna is. He's not the playmaker that Tillman is. But we do gain a guy that scores goals if you give him freedom. That nowadays he can cross the ball and find players. Also has been getting assists for Juve. I would put McKenney there. That would be my third option. And I, I don't know what you're going to do there. But that that that's the tricky one. Can you even put Pulisic? I guess that's an option too. Brendan Aronson? Yeah, no, definitely not Brendan Aronson for me. I, you know, I thought about um, I thought about McKenny. Funny enough, and I just you know decided to not not go quite that eccentric in terms of just non non positional fit. I, I I put Taylor Booth there. I think he had a really slow start to the season. Sucks that he got hurt after having a, a couple really nice games, but um, I, I'm still a believer in Taylor Booth in, in, in the middle of the park. And I know he's been playing winger a lot, but I, I like his ability to play central attacking mid. And I think that's probably going to end up being his best spot when all is said and done. Um, and I think he's really good, man. And, and I think it's a bummer how this season has kind of worked out in totality for him after having a really promising year last year and looking like he was going to kind of elevate in the way that we saw Malik uh, elevate this year. Um, but he's still, he's still, he'd be the third position specific guy for me there. Unfortunately, he's not making a roster right now, right? If you actually had to pick a 23 here, he, he's not even, even if healthy, he's not making a roster. No, he's a Olympic roster guy right now. Uh, I wouldn't go booth. I'll probably, I said like McKenney. So it might be Reina Tillman McKenney. And I think even before booth, I probably, I was going to say throw Pulisic. The problem is, like, who do you replace Pulisic on the wing, right? That's the issue. I mean, you're, you're probably right that if we had, like, a massive game tomorrow, I'm not going Taylor Booth over, you know, just putting our best players on the field. You would probably go Musa, or MMA or no, something. Yeah, You're right. Like, that's probably the answer, right? But if I'm just going to isolate the people who mostly play, like, a central attacking mid position, he's, he's kind of my three, right? So little kind of different frame of thought right there than I think how we've gone with a lot of these things. All right, everyone, thank you very much for watching. Let us know about these debates of the sixth position between Johnny and Tyler. The eight doesn't really have any debate unless you think Luca could compete with Musa. We both don't think so. And then let us know if you're Team Gio or Team Tillman. And if you're Team Tillman, tell us why you're wrong, okay? Because you're wrong if you're Team Tillman. <laughs> Drop a like before you go. Thank you very much for watching. Have a great day. We'll release part three the day after this video, which will be the forwards, the wingers, and the center forwards. Thanks for watching. Have a great day and go follow Adam on Twitter. His handle is right below his head. Bye.